All right, let's get right into it, stepping to the top of the mat. Establish the firmness through your feet and into your belly. And we'll prep the shoulders, drawing them in circles. While this is happening, find your ujjayi breathing. Start to add the elbows in. If you really want to get a sense of your stability, shift weight onto the right foot, lift the left knee, keep the arms moving. Find a focal point. If you want to test it more, extend the left leg. Try to keep the foot at hip height and just be active through the foot. I don't care if it's pointing or flexing, it's active. Squeeze the right side seat into the center line. Keep standing tall, rhythmic breathing. And then step over to the left side. And maybe you can find even bigger range through the arms now. And if they're fatiguing in one direction, let them come in the other direction. Shifting weight to left foot, lift the right knee. Find your focal point and stability. If you'd like the test, extend the leg out all the way, active through foot. Keep standing tall as you bring warmth to shoulders. A few more moments. It's okay to fall out. Let's come back in. Last moment here, and then exhale, step both feet down, about hips distance apart, reach all the way up, take hold of your elbows, and make big circles on the ceiling, in the other direction, stand really tall, keep the elbows, tip up and over to your left, stretch through right side body, firm through the feet. through center, up and over to the right, firm through feet. Stay wide open in your heart. Through center, reach the arms all the way up, bring the feet together, gaze high, squeeze the seat. Keep a little back bend as you slow dive down. You might soften knees, it's Yogi's choice. Find your way to the bottom and then dangle. Could take hold of your elbows. We'll give this a little time. Slide hands to shins, lengthen shins, lengthen, point the sits bones high. Exhale, fold all the way down, wrap your arms around your legs, even tuck the chin. Once more, fingers to floor if you can reach, or shins, lengthen. Exhale, bow all the way, pull yourself in tight. And peek forward, hands to the ground, step the left foot to the back. Bring the knee close to the ground, but it hovers a couple of inches. Lock the thumbs, sweep your arms up and breathe. Tip your body to the right. Through center. We're gonna launch forward right into standing splits, shifting weight to the right foot as the left leg lifts. You can hook behind the right ankle. Let's do it for flexibility's sake even opening the hips. Lengthen the spine, take fingertips under shoulders, and we'll bring squareness into the hips. So the left toes point down, nice and long from head to heel. And keep the left fingers rooted as you reach the right arm to the sky for a revolved half moon. And work a little harder, we'll pulse this left leg upward about 10 more times. Go ahead, lift, nine, eight, keep going. 
using that left side glute. And then a slow stepping back, left hand lands underneath your shoulder. Big long lunge, reach the right arm to the sky. And then plant right hand to the outside of right foot. Ground the back heel, left arm reaches across for side angle. If that's too low, you can always come up onto the uh, thigh. Let's tuck this right hip under, poke the heart up high. Long breath. Roll both hands down, lift the back heel, set that knee down, extend the right leg, flex the foot, and then come back to sit on your heel and fold. We'll isolate this right side hamstrings. Come on up, plant your hands and tuck the back toes, sweep the right leg high behind. And take any flow that's calling to you, could be three-legged flow, even a little hop toward handstand first. We'll meet together, downward facing dog. Send the seat way over to the left. And dog, send the seat way over to the right. And then through center. Step the feet forward just about two inches and join them together like you're zipping them up. Connecting right into Mula Bandha, the root lock. Come high on toes, bend knees, look forward. And then step or spring to the top of the mat. Lengthen, fold, rise all the way up, Tadasana. Come back in, reach up, dive low. Flat back. Step the right foot to the back of the mat. Let the right knee hover only a couple of inches above the ground. Lock your thumbs, reach the arms up. Squeeze the left heel toward you. Big breath. Tip over to the left for the joy of it. Through center, you'll launch right into standing split. On the left foot, right leg hovers. Fingers to earth. You could hook around behind the left ankle. Flatten the back. Fingertips under the shoulders. Square off at the hips so the right knee points down. Get extra long. Keep your right hand low as you reach the left arm toward the sky for revolving half moon. Now this could be plenty, or let's isolate the right side seat by lifting and pulsing. Lift and pulse. Ten more times. Nine. Eight. Keep going. Lift it, and then a slow stepping back. Right hand stays under your shoulder. Splitting legs, reach the left arm to the sky. We'll gaze down, take left hand outside the foot, grounding back heel, reach right arm across your ear. We'll tuck this left hip under the body. Right arm reaches behind the ear. 
long breath. Gaze down, both hands come down. We'll set the back knee down, extend left leg, flex that foot, and then take your weight back towards your heel to fold. The more you flex that left foot, of course, the more you'll feel this. Spine stays long, but I encourage the neck softening. Lengthen, come all the way up, shift forward, tuck the back toes, and sweep the left leg high behind. Find your flow any way you like to move. Meeting together. A downward facing dog. And let's set the forearms down. Walk the feet in a little bit closer. Press the ground away enough to feel like you're getting longer at your armpits. So we start our heart opening here. Bring the left foot into center, reach the right leg high. Gaze toward the thumbs. This could be plenty. If you wish to though, hop onto the left toes, even take a small hop upward or float this upward. Five breaths. And how slowly can you lower it, keeping control? Come all the way down to sit on knees. We'll get rest in between and a heart opening. So to do that, take the heart forward, open the arms out really wide. It's as though you're allowing your rib cage to spill forward and the seat to reach back. If it feels comfortable, gaze up even start to reach your arms behind you. Take a little while. And exhale, tip forward. Take hands to earth, empty in cat pose. Really tucking tail. Find neutral spine, set the elbows on the ground. We'll tuck the toes, lift the hips, finding dolphin again, come in a little closer. You can always soften knees, of course. Let's try to make the armpits a little longer by pressing down firmly through hands and elbows. This is plenty. Uh, if you want to test it though, take the right foot into center, lift the left leg. See if you can keep control as you roll onto right tippy toes, maybe just bending the right knee into your chest. If you have the strength, come all the way up. As little a kick as you can. You can always pause this, of course, to take it to the wall. Or keep the three-legged dolphin building strength there. About three more breaths, nice and slow ones. Coming down with as much control as you can. Set it down on your knees. Shrug it off. We'll do a last bit of opening for the spine before we call it a session. Take your arms 
uh, take yourself to the wall about an arm's distance away. And you'd be using the wall to press away and let your heart drop down like a puppy pose. Okay. So you'd need to walk your legs away or knees away in order to give yourself enough space for the whole arm, the whole torso, and chest falls toward the ground. Let the sits bones continue to reach high. You can always soften your knees, that's okay. Let the head relax down. If the shoulders hate this, take them just a, take the hands a little wider. If you're okay though, try to keep straight through the arms. A few more breaths. as though you're dragging your hands down the wall, but you're not really. You're going to use that energy and effort to lift the arms, lift the head, chest, shoulders, come all the way back up. Shake it off. Coming rapidly to close here. You want to make your way onto your back body. Plant the feet next to the sitting bones. Take a quick, honest stock of you. If you've got a wheel in you without injury, I really encourage a wheel uh, every day just for how beneficial it is. But any back bend is perfectly good. Bridge, fish, even taking the sacrum on a block, extending the legs and getting a really nice passive hip flexor opening. But let's do one back bend together. Come on in when you're ready. doing wheel how straight can the arms be can there be energy between your knees can you press out through the chest a few more moments if you've got it tucking the chin will come slowly down rocking the knees right and left Okay, cross right ankle over the left thigh and then send both knees over to the left. You can help them down. Back through center, uncross, left ankle to right thigh, knees stays wide, but then tilt them over to the right. You can help the left knee down. back through center. Extend both legs. If you clicked on this video, I suspect maybe you don't have all that much time, but I so encourage at least this brief Shavasana. I'll only give them two minutes. And you look for true resting brain state.
and come back to fuller breathing, some movement. And taking your favorite way back up to seated. So glad you're here, Yogi. As you may know, I've been asking the community question if you stay through till the end of Shavasana. So today I'm interested in what is your absolute favorite duration of uh, a yoga video? I'm sure that changes depending on the day, but just what you're feeling right now. What is your ideal duration when you go to YouTube and search for a class? Hope you have a wonderful week. See you next Sunday. Be well.